right all right what's happening good people hope everybody's doing all right thank you again for another thursday with the brothers chopping it up today we're talking about the age race class and sex women define redefining difference with uh dr Lo i mean miss lord still chopping it up with a uh, sister outsider and still got have our brothers here we may have a some other brothers that jump on but uh got walter uh nick and martin uh so thank you for tuning in uh, if you can like share and if you're looking at us on uh youtube subscribe and you know we'll continue doing this but if you have any questions also just uh, leave your comments, and we'll try to attend to those as they pop up. Uh, so today, who's going to start it off is Walter, because everybody else has started off. Uh, Martin started <laughs> off two weeks ago, then Nick, so it's Walter's turn. <laughs> and I elected myself to go last. <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't know it worked like that. That's but like that's all right. Um Man, I will say that every week, uh, this author is, uh, I, she, she's something else. Uh, incredible. Incredible. I, I was say, saying to Brian that I am ashamed that I had not heard of her prior to, um, to this. Um, but I'll jump right in there. And, um, one of the, what it, I was highlighting and I was like, if you highlight everything, you might as well not highlight anything. So I had, but um, one of the first things I highlighted that jumped out at to, to me and um, it speaks to, uh, to, to just the overall sense of oppression uh, right at the beginning of the chapter, the, uh, I guess midway through that second paragraph, whenever, whenever the need for some pretense of communication arises. Those who profit from our oppression call upon us to share our knowledge with them. In other words, it is the responsibility of the oppressed mm. to teach the oppressors their mistake. And then she follows that up with the others. The oppressors maintain their position and evade responsibility for their own actions, basically through that that model and and again um so i'm about you know i as i was reading that my initial shift was to go again to black white and race but i'm doing the thing that she is accusing the oppressor of doing I, i'm i miss because she says it as well right there women have to explain to men <laughs> mm. you know what we're doing and instead of hearing that my my cognitive distance dissonance said jump to to race jump to the the place where i'm safe where i'm not the oppressor and then i had to go back and i had to deal with that because um just the beginning of that that the beginning of that quote is really what struck me too whenever the need for the pretense of communication not that we actually want to have communication, not that we actually want to solve the problem, but I, the pretense of, 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 of the need for communication arises. I say or do something that is sexist and they want to and, and then I'm in hot water. So now I got to act like we want to have communication. We, I really want to resolve this thing. And that's all of that is bound up in um, in that and what she's saying right here, that that this oppression uh redefining difference then is is something I, I i wanted to jump to where i'm the same where i'm in the same position that she's in so that i don't have to deal with it and she's she's not gonna let me do that this 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 writing won't let me do that well i too like you walter uh I, reading that passage i tried to jump the tracks and and get myself to safety and to say, hey, I have some uh, some input into this conversation also. But then continually reading the chapter, it's like, wait a minute. I'm a part of the problem. And it's almost this, I thought about this uh, 
this proactive versus reactive mindset. We, I get myself in a, in a situation and I react to try to fix it, to make things back the way it's comfortable instead of getting in front of the train, realizing all of my issues, all of my, where I am being the oppressor and to deal with myself and fix those issues where I, where I don't have to be reactive on the back end to try to fix it. And so, I mean, like you said, uh, you were spot on. Like she, it's a, cu a couple other quotes in here. She pretty much just puts your face to the fire as a man, not as just a white man, not as a, a black, but as a man, she puts your face to the fire to, to really cause and cause me to really take a deep look in the mirror to, to really deal with this, this, and I believe that I should be at a place or I need to be transitioning to a place to help this redefining and not to sit on the sidelines and watch the redefining, but I should be participating in this re redefining if I'm going to say I am who I, I, I claim to be. Let, let me go back to, to, your, to your initial point, and I, and I think both of you addressed it. Is it is it I'm trying to think of the correct word? You know, it, when she says it is the responsibility of, of the oppressed to teach the oppressors their mistakes. Do you do, do you do you find that troubling? Wrong? You know what? What is your what is that? How do you see that? I mean, I know you spoke about it, but. Are you saying that shouldn't be that we that they should figure it out themselves? Because if we never, if those who are oppressed never uh, show or say, "Hey, this is oppressive," or even rebel, then the false assumption is you and you are enjoying this. You have no problem with it. I'll I'll say this. I wouldn't say it's wrong that the oppressed have to teach the oppressor the, the mistakes. It's in the order that the oppressed have to teach the oppressors the mistakes. So it's that, that proactive reactive thing. If you want to learn your mistakes before you do something or before something happens, we can sit down and have a proactive conversation on how to redefine the lines, but don't come to me to tell me or, or ask me about the issue when something happens. But, but let me ask you this. If we're talking about oppressor and oppression and the oppressed, why would I then come to you as if I want to take you, de-oppress you, if that makes exactly. sense? I, I don't want to. I, look, slavery was never meant to end. Right. I agree. So why would I then come to you and say, hey, uh, I'm trying to find ways to remove you out of that location. No, I'm not going to do that. So if there is never a rebellion or a revolt, no one is going to ever push that envelope. So the oppressed have to rebel. The op that's why protests are needed. If you don't protest, no one will ever say there is a problem because they're going to assume. And R.G. Law says, says this in a later a later uh, essay in this book where she says, if you don't ever come to the point where you you tell the oppressor that, hey, this is oppressive, they'll think you enjoy it. No, no, no. no. What I'm saying, and I'm I'm trying not to use the race example to 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 get where where my mind is, but it's almost like I can use this example. It's like we know we know. Uh, um, we know oppression of, of those of different sexual orientations of us is a problem. Before anything happens, we know that's a problem. But why do we want to go and have a conversation about it after something happens like a mass shooting at a, a, a Pulse. Pulse. At Pulse. There should be, there should have been a conversation before that ever happens. 
Go ahead, Walter. That, that we're missing again. Her premise is that there, this is all pretense of communication. There is no. It's what Brian is saying. There is no real authentic attempt to lose my power. I, I am simply, as she said, I'm simply trying to maintain the position I have and evade responsibility for my actions. Now, the way I do that is by asking you, okay, what's wrong? You you educate me. You tell me what I'm doing wrong. And 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 it's it, it's the same thing. It is it is I don't have I don't have a problem using the race issue now. But uh, to help explain it, it is the white person coming to the black person and saying, well, what do you want? See, mm -hmm. it's, it, if we go, if we're going to, if we want to stick to, if we go back to the scripture, it's the man asking Jesus, who is my neighbor? Because as soon as Jesus says who the neighbor is, then I know who I don't have to deal with. If you tell me, if, if Jesus defines who the neighbor is, then those are the only people I have to love. Anybody else that doesn't fit that description, then I don't have to deal with them. As soon as you tell me what you need for you to be quiet yeah. and I can maintain my position and still not take responsibility for my action, whatever you tell me the problem is and I deal with it, you got affirmative action. You got right. busing. You got this. You got that. But we never moved off of our place of position. We never mm -hmm. took responsibility for what slavery did to people of African descent in this country. We, we never corrected uh, with reparations. We played repar reparations to the so-called slave master, not to the former slave. We paid the, the, the slave, the so-called slave master got money to make up for the property, human beings that they lost. But the, the, the person who was freed has nothing. It's freed for what? And so it's the same same idea. Like for me as a man, it makes me uncomfortable if I'm called on my sexism. The first thing I want to do is figure out the quickest way to end this conversation. Right, it's a right. pretense. But I'm and not as soon as I can get you to, as soon as I can get whatever it needs to happen for the conversation to go away, then we good. But I think I, I feel as if I'm being misunderstood. Well, I, say more. I'm not saying that the comp. I, I don't want the conversation to end. The conversation has to start for me to get out of my place of power, to deconstruct my place of power. That's where I, I I'm coming from. The idea of the conversation starting before something happens. But but Nick, no, no, but, no, but, but who but who whoever so. whoever deconstructs their own place of power? I'm I'm not coming from from the idea of thinking of who does it. I'm I'm saying this is what needs to happen so that we can get beyond the place to where we are. So in your words, when you I started, know, Nick, because I know when I, you I want to protect my place of power. Right. Right. Yeah. But when well, you started, when you started, your first response was. I want to move from being reactionary to, right. to proactive. Pro, pro, right. right, that means it has so, to happen before. We can use the example of, of, of uh, women's history is coming up next month. Right. Right? In the in the previous years, how many of us, I'm going to put us all on the spot, how many of us have actually uh, attended like a women's history program or done something during Women's History Month proactive to uh, to celebrate women's history. Okay. I, I mean, I, I've done things um, over the last couple of years. I think two years ago, I, I really, I didn't know what women's history, I didn't even know that such a thing existed. But my awareness uh, has come from having two daughters and a wife that constantly um, remind me of, of those blind spots that I have when it comes to to things like that. So it wasn't something that I just decided one day I'm going to do this. No, it was because they communicated to me and they, they you know, um, which goes back to the conversation that I had uh, in the car 
my great grandfather would always, if there was somebody driving bad, now, now granted, now let, let me just say he was born in 1910. So don't, don't jump on my granddaddy, my great granddaddy. But if somebody was driving badly, he would say that ain't nothing but an old woman, right? So I kind of picked up on it. And so one day somebody was, I was like, that ain't nothing but an old woman. And my daughter said, dad, she was 12. Dad, you're sexist. I said, no, I'm not. And I said, wow, that was sexist. And so ever since then, um, I asked him, I said, hey, y'all remind, y'all let me know when I miss it. And so what, that's how I kind of learned about um, Women's Day, Women's Month, the month. So started doing things and honor it and celebrate it. So it was a great opportunity to honor black women twice in that, in that manner. And that's the that is proactive though, but that's the difference. Like instead of something happening, someone says something, and now we got to have a conversation. We are we could we have these opportunities, and it's similar to what we were talking about with Black History Month. They, we want to trot out the same, Mal, you know, Martin, Dr. King, maybe some Malcolm X. You know, we trot out the same folks, but there's really no effort to actually deal with with what's happening. There's no true communication. It's here's your month. That's good. Now go back to where you were. Mm -hmm. Go back to your phone. I, I, personally, I feel like I'm communicating the same thing, just maybe in a different yeah, way. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. I'm agreeing with you. I'm not disagreeing with you. Point me out where I'm wrong. Like, hold my feet to the fire. Like, anytime. Not just when I do something. Just keep me aware. When, when you feel like there's an issue, say something. Not even just with me, just in general. Yeah, like, but whose who's responsibility is, is it? Right. Is it my responsibility to hold, is it women's responsibility to hold no. men accountable for our behavior? That's what, and that's no. what I'm saying. But that that's exact, the, the way that plays out, though, is to keep men in power. Right. When, when we do that, when we say, well, you tell me what's wrong. You tell me how to fix it. Because as soon as they say how to fix it or what's wrong, then we, we're off the hook. Yeah. Because that's all we got to do. I just got to do that much. Yep. Well, a, a good example would be the um, congressman that said a man, then said a woman. Right? Like, well, what, what was that about? You know, for some reason, he thought that was a, a good thing. And I don't know. I don't know the whole backstory, but I think a lot of times we try to fix it. Maybe maybe somebody says something to him. I don't. I don't know the backstory, but it's very uncomfortable to sit and stuff um, and not do anything. There's there's a great YouTube video that we watched when I was doing my chapel residency. It's called. It's a two minute video. It's called. It's not about the nail, but it's oh, a, yeah. it's a husband yeah. and wife, and she she has a nail in her forehead. And so she was trying to have a conversation with him to tell him how bad her day was and what was going on in his life. And he was sitting there and the whole time he was staring at the nail because he probably, I think he assumed that that's what was wrong, but she, that was the nail wasn't bothering her. It was the fact that he didn't listen to her. And so when you look at, when, when you, when the question what you're asking is, whose responsibility is it in terms of a woman it should be if they decide they want to say something then yes they can say something but they should be obligated there's no obligatory um thing that you should have to tell somebody but if you feel that that's what you want to do and you desire then yeah that's like i i, I feel that you can't do the bulk of the work for the oppressor because that's that's a moot point how can you how can you tell, you know, well, I need to help you see this. All you can do is when you feel that the need is to insert or assert yourself in a way that as a response to something that you want to say, then you say it. But you shouldn't be obligated to, well, I gotta do this. Like even the way the work of race. I mean, I choose when I wanna do that. I mean, it's just too hard. I don't I don't feel like exerting that kind of energy all the time. I do it when I feel like it or want to, but why why should I be obligated or why should I be obligated to let us know what we're doing 
And I know, Biden, you said that how will you you said, well, well, how will somebody know uh, that they're oppressive? Well, you 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 know that you, it, it's a self check. But but let's go back to the and that is my question. Just like your grandfather, the story you use about your grandfather, he didn't know he was being sexist. That was just what that was just the norm for him. So if no one ever says, hey, this is wrong or this is sexist or for you, for that matter, when you said it, you didn't think anything you were being sexist. But if no one ever says it to you. And uh, and awaking, awaken your your this 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 uh sexist ideology that you have, then you will never know it. And that's what I'm talking about. Someone introducing you to the fact that at this particular moment, you're presenting these, you're presenting sexism in your actions, in your, in your presentation. Oh, let me even, that's even being saw. You're sexist, you know, bottom line. And so people have to kind of just tell you that because if you grew up in, in that, and you do not know, and you're never made aware of it, then it will take someone to, to kind of put it in your face, put the mirror in front of you and, and kind of introduce you, introduce you to it. And that's the question I'm asking. Where does uh, the oppressed, you know, where does that line in the sand come, if that makes sense? Well, I think once it's put in your face, it's, it's then your responsibility right. to do your homework. Right. It, once it's put, once, once you have that initial contact with it, it's your responsibility to do your, I shouldn't have to keep coming back to you like, you know, like, yeah, we talked about that last time, but you did it again. Right. Like, it, it, you should go and, I mean, it's the same with, 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 with racism. We shouldn't have a conversation about racism with the same people after something happens every time. Like once we've had that conversation one time, it's your job now to say, okay, let me go find like my racial tendencies. Let me go find out more about this racism. Let me go see who's around me that's racist. Like it, it's your job then. I shouldn't have to point out every piece of racism around you and within you for you to change. And maybe maybe this is the part that um, maybe this will help in some way. She's the other quote that I, well, not one of many <laughs> that I highlighted. She said, We talk about, we don't talk about human difference. We talk about human deviance. Yes. So, male, and she goes through, and what is, what is the standard is white male, young mil, to middle aged white male is the right. standard. So, I fall under the male part of the male standard. So, woman is the deviance. See, instead of talking about difference, we talk about deviance. And and if you're doing that, if you're doing that, then it makes it OK to say something like and again, not trying to beat up on your granddad, uh, Mark, but it says it, it makes it OK to say something like oh, there ain't nothing but a woman drive if it's a bad drive or, you know, those people are just lazy or they they could do better if they, you know, or, or this uh, gender is weak or any kind of thing like that. If you're the standard, then you get to. You name the deviants and, and they are less than, they're supported. Their difference is not celebrated, it's not appreciated even. Um, so that then you can do it, so then you can do and say things that are are not that are, are oppressive, I should say. And then so the come again, the communication, the conversation then is not authentic. It's not you're not really trying to hear what the other person is saying, even if they are making something, you're making you aware of something. And she does. She goes on in that chapter to talk about. Yeah, that's why we keep we keep having these discussions over and over and over and over again. We keep talking about the same problems over and over and over again. The ERA never passed. The Equal mm -hmm. Rights Amendment never passed because. The conversation, you know, we didn't really want to have the conversation. Mm -hmm. there, there was no, it was only a pretense of wanting to resolve this issue. Because we know what the standard is. Male right. is the standard. Y'all right. are deviant. And if y'all would just be more like us, then there's no problem. 
you know, in those same, <clears throat> in that same passage of scripture that you, not scripture, <laughs> in, this, in those same, <laughs> that same paragraph you just read, <laughs> when it says, he, she kind of, she kind of uh, puts that in even greater perspective when she says, white women focus, focus upon their, or their oppression mm -hmm. as women and ignore differences of race, sexual preference, class, and age. And, and later on, she even says, you know, in, not maybe in a in a previous chapter we read, white women tend to uh, move into white patriarchy at a greater clip than even some white men. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. we saw that. You went back mute. Hold on. That was me. Yeah, we Go saw ahead. that played out in the last election for for president. Right. You know, so that yeah, that she's she's right on point with that. Yeah. But but I think for me, when she started, she moves to this next one, and I think she unpacks it because she starts she she starts talking about. Of, she starts talking about art, and she says, of all the art forms, right. poetry is the most economical. Mm -hmm. And I said, now she makes this make even more sense because you know, I'm a, I'll tell you the honest truth: never have I even thought about it in that sense. Like, why is why why aren't poets celebrated like? Uh, and she even talks about it like a sculptor because all you have is a piece of paper and a pen i mean you think about the power that uh what's the sister garmin Gar is that her name amanda gorman gorman, gorman. the power gorman. that she welded gorman gorman but the power that she welded when she stood at the first to ever stand at the super bowl and you know, spit out her poetry and bring it dope to the life. I, it's almost like I could see it. I mean, and so, and that's just pen and pad bringing it, bringing the heat. And, and, and what she says is like, look, with poetry, the playing field is even. I don't, you don't need any supplies, but a it, and it's it's there right in front of everybody. And so, what do you do then? Did we freeze up? Everybody going out. But I get. I, I'll 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 tie this 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 this, this uh, comment by Scott that it has to be that necessary sacrifice and it has to be intentional mm -hmm. that that i think that's the key the key to uh the whole piece is the intentionality of that sacrifice of that uh i don't even like vulnerability because i can i can back out of that when i sacrifice i'm really putting putting myself on the line to say that I'm going to make this change no matter what. <laughs> let, 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 me, let, let me ask, let me ask before you before you before you ask that question. Cause you use explain, expound on sacrifice and vulnerability. Am I pushing you too far with that? No, absolutely not. Well, I would say vulnerability i'm making myself available and i'm opening up i think sacrifice calls me to give away something and my and and and, and vulnerability just caught just man, opening up i'm not i'm not coming to the table to give away anything i'm just opening myself up to make myself available but sacrifice to me is I'm giving up something. I'm, I'll make myself vulnerable to hear the conversation, 
But I had to me, I had to sacrifice to give up my power to say that I have to strip myself of this power. Okay, okay. I'm gonna let Walter say his piece because I'm gonna have a question for you based on something she says in the text in the essay. Well, I'm, I'm slightly, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I don't, I don't like that language of of uh, sacrifices necessary on behalf of the oppressor. But I, I think that's a. Uh, that is that is feeding into this idea that the oppressor class is the standard, like that they really are superior and and they have to give up something to come down to the inferior class to make it even or or you know or to to level the playing field. Uh, that that they're not sacrificing. They're they took something that wasn't theirs in the first place. So who, 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 when you who, when you said took something, who who did the taking? Depending on what, again, males from females. If you want to mm -hmm. stick to to Audre Lorde uh, in her pre her in her context, males took power that didn't belong to us from from women. Mm -hmm. So to give it to to give that up isn't a sacrifice. Is justice. Justice, right, right, right. <laughs> it right. is right. It's what should have been from the beginning. When I sacrifice something, I'm giving up my right to something for the benefit of someone else. But if I shouldn't have had it in the first place, I can't call it a sacrifice. Okay. Well, based on, let me put a pin in that. Put a pin right there because. I don't even know if my next question is even warranted, but I'm going to ask it anyway, based on, you remember when she was talking about the young girls being sold up in between their legs mm -hmm. for the, the satisfaction of men. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you classify that and, and some of it now, and, and, and some of it she says, as we see it and we understand it, we understand that is a that is straight violation. That is evil. But she also said that this is kind of, some of some of it was the custom of some some African customs of the time. So when you take that into consideration. Is that sacrifice a vulnerability? Well, Walter didn't deconstruct it. My, I, <laughs> I get it, and, and I agree, and, and that's why I said it. Kind of, it, it, you know, the question then becomes a little unwarranted. But I think, you know, uh, 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 I was listening to this 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 TikTok video. And this little boy came to his father. He said, look, the teacher got mad at me today because I said there's a difference between saying I'm sorry and an apology. And his father said, what? Yeah. He said, yeah, it's a difference between I'm sorry and apology. And she got mad and kicked me out of the class. And she's like, no, it, no, there isn't. He said, yes, there is. He says, go to a funeral. See, if you say I'm sorry at a funeral, is one thing, but if you apologize, it's something totally different. So in the context, sacrifice and vulnerability mean something totally different according to whom you saying it to in what particular context. That, and I think what Walter said in, in the beginning, change, kind of, as you, and I think you said it deconstructs, kind of blows up the whole context and says, you know what? Let's throw this whole throw this whole thing in the freaking ocean. Matter of fact, let's put a match to it, or let's just act like it wasn't there to begin with. You know, so. But, but I that, think that. Go ahead, Walter. No, but I think that's what Miss Lord is saying again. This idea of, of difference. That's what we're playing on. That's what the oppressor is playing on. Is this idea of difference makes it possible to have this this thing, this power, whatever, and then. And uh, Scott said that to your response about the uh, <laughs> right. 
And so then, Nick, though, uh, or Brian, to your question about the, the female circumcision, as they called it, then you can say we've been doing this as part of our heritage for so long. For us to give it up now is a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. right. But see, your premise right, right, from, right. The start, from the start, it's, it's all wrong. If you start off, it's like a mathematical problem. If you start off and you make it's got ten steps to your um to your problem, and you make a, a pro, you make a mistake in step number two. It don't matter what you do three through ten, right? You you're not gonna come out with the right, right. answer. Right, right, exactly, 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 exactly. Tony said, "Amanda Garman is a phenomenal woman." I agree. Strong hand. I agree. Yeah. Let me add. I had a she, question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, where she says this uh uh in this section, uh she says uh because of their reluctance to see black women as women and different from themselves, to examine black women's literature effectively requires that we be seen as whole people in our actual complexities, as individuals, as women, as human. And my question, it, it took, when I read that, it took me back to last week, and I asked, I said, is this uh, pretty much the critique that we were using last week about, it's not, it shouldn't be black history, it should just be history. Like, in, in order to, uh, that we, if you understand what I'm asking, yeah, I get it. Say more about that. Say more. You, you, that you, you, you look here. You, you try to set up, set them up because I'm not gonna answer it. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we, if, if, if we're gonna be fair, it shouldn't be no as, as we talked about in, in, in this thing of difference and deviance, we got to understand the difference. But like, but that shouldn't be the caption head, if, if, if that makes sense. I'm trying to think. I was reading something. I think I was reading uh, C.T. Vivian's book, Black Power and the American Myth. Mm -hmm. And around, it, it was uh, one of the pages, he, he makes this statement. Uh, he says, I have carefully considered the use of the uppercase and the lowercase letters for the terms black and white. I use black as a self-designation, which parallels the white self-designation, Caucasian. On the other hand, the word white stands alongside the white man's choice of the word colored that's a, that's a footnote so he's he's very clear that he chooses to capitalize black and use it as this designator because it's his preference and he sees the intentionality of it and the importance of it so that others when they read it recognize that i was trying to make an emphatic point Now, Audre Lord is a poet. Poets don't, uh, they're intentional about how they, right. they use words. I don't know if y'all paid attention in this, in this essay here as well. When she talked about American, she lowercase a mm -hmm. again. I saw that this time. So, so we're not talking about somebody that haphazardly does things that labels things because she understands the importance of what and how I say it. You notice she's she's one of the first people that I've ever read that pays attention to the difference between poetry and prose. And she talks about it as if, to me, they're similar, almost the same. But see, I'm not a skilled poet like her. I may write in prose to a certain degree, and some of that's because I've read so much Baldwin, 
but she writes poetry and she finds it difficulty to write in a difficult to write in prose. So she does when she to answer your question, you know, when she when she does things of, around women's liberation, women's writings, women's lib, and folk, so forth and so on, you know, she's she's not haphazardly throwing it out, and she's she's not trying to miss words or misuse words. I highlighted something about that too. Those differences have been misnamed, misused in the service of separation and confusion. Well, and what what else she said that made me think about that is two paragraphs down where she says, refusing to recognize the difference makes it impossible to see the different problems and pitfalls facing us as women. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it made me question, like, are you trying to deconstruct this deviation between the two or are you doing a both and we, we like we have to do what we have as need as black women but also we can't forget to understand that we have to be women together also i, I i'm gonna tell you honestly there's some things in this chapter that i don't think we as men need to touch. I'm just being honest. That's just like the 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 uh, the young white girl who got on stage with with uh, Kendrick Lamar, and one of his lyrics said "nigga," and she said it, and he stopped the show. Like, look, hold up. I appreciate you coming up here, but. Right. You don't get creative license to say that word. You're supposed to jump over that word because the last last guy that was up here, the white guy, you heard him just jump over the word. You can't say that. <laughs> and I think some of the stuff that she writes in here, we read it and applaud and, and say, we with you. We lock arms. And if you need some somebody back here to throw some blows, we with you. But uh, we dare not analyze and critique. We just say, uh yes. <laughs> just like well, Nick, you ain't married, but just like your wife say something to you and you don't you don't want that, you don't want that smoke, you just say yes. Mm hmm And go get you a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's that some of the things you the things you you pointed out and some other and Matt Knight, some a lot of things in here, you just say yes, yes. Mm hmm. It's something in here. I just read and just keep on moving. Like, yeah, I better not touch that. Yeah. Let, let, let's just see what uh, our good friend here, this beautiful sister, said. You notice she said, "Amen." We're not going to this. Uh, this young lady, Tony Strother. I don't know who she is. She's <laughs> married. She's married to the to that guy down there in the corner. So we know he he's been getting a lot of drinks of water. <laughs> <laughs> But I, but I think it's, go ahead, Walt. Go ahead. If I remember your original question, Nick, about whether or not we need to make the difference with Black history, is that are we still dealing with that, or have we? Because you kind of shifted a little bit, I guess. I did. Yeah. Continue on, uh, Walter Mosley. But but it, but it, <laughs> <laughs> again, though, if if we uh if we're gonna deal with the realness of it, when 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 a person says that, and I know that's not, I, at least I hope this is not what you're saying, but when when I hear a white person say that about, well, it's all history now, you know, we we don't need a Black History Month to separate out. They're they're they they're doing that that same thing. They're they're uh, discounting what has come before the 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 harm that has already been done by separating us out by playing on the. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm talking oh, about okay. in, in the in the in the idea that we talked about last week. I think it was you that brought it up. Um, oh, yeah. So and, and it's the same as like when you when we want to 
folks who want to say now nah, we're, we're all just part of the human race. That is a true statement. Right. But we can't act like race doesn't exist now right. because right. Right. it is so ingrained. It, there's so many implications involved in that in that statement. And so and, and, and I think, again, going back, not trying to escape, but going back to where we talk about with, with Ms. Lloyd and, and this idea between black men and women, um, we can't act like we, we can we can hide behind some of this patriarchy ourselves in a way that gets us off the hook and, and says, well, it's not really like that. Or, you know, we've you've made so much progress. Look at we got a, a, a you know, a woman vice president, that kind of thing. Whereas instead of dealing with with with, with the reality. Let me let me shift and ask y'all about this. This this is I like okay. particular phrases. Go ahead. D just think about this. Go ahead. You had you had something once? Well, I had a question. I don't know if we go. You know, I'm looking at the clock. We said we've got 14 minutes. I don't know if we can get into all of it. Uh, the question I'm going to ask. So yours might be a little more simple or. or go ahead. Go ahead. We, I mean, shoot. Go ahead. Well, okay. Simple, so go ahead. So at uh, it's page 107 in my copy. Um, uh, the first full paragraph on that page, she she writes, um, there, are, there are three ways, uh, wait a minute, we have all been programmed to respond to the human differences between us with fear and loathing and to handle that difference in one of three ways. We either ignore it, and if that is not possible, we copy it, and we think it, if we think it is dominant, or destroy it if we think it is subordinate. And, and I, it made me, the, the note I wrote beside that is, so where does assimilation come in? And I'm thinking about how things are co-opted. Like, uh, for example, jazz and rock and roll. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know the history. Maybe they know more of jazz. But a lot of people don't know the history of rock and roll, that it really was assimilated and taken over mm -hmm. by the dominant culture after they couldn't destroy it. Right. So it make it makes me think about how our difference is still then used, um, and and it get make this into a discussion of capitalism and move us a little bit away from what she's talking about. But but how how is that? I mean, you know, it, it seems like her. It seems like there's a fourth way. Then it's not just the three ways. It seems like there's a a fourth way of 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 uh, our difference being assimilated in a way. That still keeps the non-dominant culture in an inferior position, if that makes sense. And we're starting to see it with with even with rap. Not starting to see it. It's yeah. getting it's clear. Yeah. Say a little bit more, if you can. You need to get shirts what? with that on. Yeah, I'm gonna, more, yeah, man. I'm gonna make a t-shirt for that. Say say more. Say um more. So I think again, well, and it, it, I think it does fall into this capitalistic idea. Like if we can make money off of it, then it's okay. It, it you know, but the creativity and 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 even some of the um, authenticity is lost. Then I'm not saying that you know, I I grew up in the '80s and I I listened to more rock than I did. Well, not more rock, but I listen to rock and roll. I listen to, to the uh, to these rock stations, and, and my brother, my, I, my brother's eleven years older older than me. He's been there for a while, but he would pan my music choices all the time. He would make you know give me trouble about listening to ZZ Top and and Ozzy Osbourne and all these other folks. Um, but but my point, and I kind of drift away from my point, but I think we we um. We allow that assimilation to happen, and then we lose, we lose some some ground, and it and it happens again economically, from what I can see. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how how to address this, because I'm not. What what it, it, it we've also done it the other way too. Uh, i.e., hip hop with sampling said, "Look, we taking everybody's stuff. You know, 
black, white, hip, uh, yeah. uh, uh, reggae, country and western, uh, whatever. And we're going to take, but we're not going to take your whole thing. We're going to take a little bit and put it over here and we're going to keep looping it, but we're going to add something to it because we couldn't, uh, we, you know, some of us couldn't afford to buy instruments, but we can afford this one thing, this turntable that keeps playing it back and forth to loop it. So go ahead. I'm, I think that ties into her when she talks about the difference between poetry and a novelist, a poet and a novelist. I think it's the same same idea, though. Like, right. I'm just as creative as you. But rap was lowbrow. It was hip hop. Mm -hmm. was, again, we talk, I talk about this. I hear people still saying the thing, man, this, this I'd be glad when this hip hop plays out. It, it, people yep. ain't going to be listening to this 120, 20 years ago. Man, it is it here. It ain't, it ain't going nowhere. But I, it was low brow. It was not these. This isn't real music. That's my point exactly. Just like she's saying, this, I'm a poet, but I don't get any respect because I don't have the I don't have the time that a novelist has. I don't have right, right. I don't right. have you know the reams of. I I just got. I can make my make my. Cre and I can use what's around. I got a scrap of paper over here, and I got a piece of a pencil, and I'm gonna write something that's gonna blow your brains out. It's gonna make you just like that's the key. Go listen but, to uh, uh, Ninth Wonders interview with uh, Bob Jones. It's on YouTube, and where Bob Jones, the Bob Jones, the Bob Jones, Ninth Wonder, and Bob Jones has this conversation about Nautilus. And Bob Jones says, "Yeah, I never thought that. Do don't 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 da don't don't a da don't don't." Don't, 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 don't. And Ninth Wonder almost loses his mind because he says, do you realize how that simple loop revolutionized hip hop? Every, Because, you know, everybody samples a Nautilus. And Bob Jones says, well, let me tell you something. Maybe one day I could do some work with you. He says, you send me a track and I'll sample you. So, so that's not what I'm talking about. But, but I'm just saying, my point is, there is, when you says that, you know, hip hop will lose some of its luster. Bob Jones is says, no, I appreciate what these hip hop cats did for me because yeah. it made me see that I never, here's a, here's the other part. He says, Nautilus wasn't even supposed to be on the album. We just threw that on there at a the last minute. That's why he says, if you know anything about, about uh, records, the best songs are always the first songs. The worst songs, are always close to the inner part of the, the record. He says that's why Nautilus is on the inner part of the record because we didn't think anything about it. But Nautilus does made that man a multimillionaire. And so he said, I never saw it, never even thought about it. But you all, because you all, you hip hop guys, you know, from DJ Premier, Pete Rock, uh, Rick Rubin for Run DMC, really, that's the main one. When, when they sampled it for Peter Piper, blew it through the roof. But most people today know it from Wu-Tang Clan. Change how hip hoppers hear jazz. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm just, what I'm speaking, I guess what I'm speaking more so to is, um, and I hate to start calling artist artist names, but, but uh, Vanilla Ice or- um, No, we will not mention his name. No. Or, or some other folks in that vein who have assimilated it, right. made money off of it, and took the heart out of it. You understand what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Um, and in some way, so that's what I'm saying. Like, and I love Kenny G has his place in, in no. whatever, but <laughs> manufactured jazz in the elevator. But yeah. what I'm saying, so I don't but, want to get but, that in the elevator. <laughs> No, yeah, no, nah, nah, I ain't gonna let y'all do that. Now, I mean, that man got some talent. Don't, don't do that now. Yeah, but, yeah. But what I'm saying, Jeremy Lin had some talent for a season. Oh Lord. Go ahead. I'm sorry. See, this is why. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is so. But then, so, uh, and I think it may have been Martin. One of you one time was talking about the 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 mediocrity that is accepted from the from a person of a dominant culture. 
Mm-hmm. But yeah. the 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 the, the, uh, the the just the dynamic creativity. Again, I am ashamed that I'd never heard of Audrey Lord until now. Yeah. I'm, I'm ashamed uh, that shouldn't be. This woman is brilliant. Her writing, I mean, just the way she puts words together, and and the and it anyway. It, there's something about that that uh, assimilation from the dominant culture makes Kenny G this mega star when like we're saying it's it's all right. But somebody like a you know, and I I'm I'm blanking right now, but someone who from from jazz early begins probably died with a nickel in their pocket. But mm-hmm. had, and we're still listening to that music now. Uh, you know, right. uh, uh, the only sm- I don't know if the only monk died penniless or whatever, but uh, or, or Coltrane or someone like that. These people they're starting to get there. I mean, they got their due, I guess, during that time as well. But that I don't know that they made the money. You look at Muddy Waters, yeah, Muddy Waters, or uh, or, or uh, Little uh, Richard at the time. Yeah, Chuck Berry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That that and so I think you no, I think you make I think you make RG Lord's point exponentially with that example because I think that is what she was doing. And and the thing that you do that she does is that she, if you've noticed in every essay, for the most part, she always goes back to the artist. Right. Because she is an artist and she's always trying to find that. That that kind of that the place for black the black performative, you know, mm-hmm. and I think we lose that in a lot of our our interactions. The performative in everything we do, you know, that's why when you read her, you say this is not just a scholar, this is an artist, because well, scholars, I- mo- many scholars have a great information, and you see, like I, that's some knowledge I don't have. Uh, but they don't write with the skill and the artistry. Well, uh, it gets of Lord. because it gets stolen. I mean, okay, for example, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all remember Living Single? Um, you remember Living Single? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What show came a year later? Friends. Okay, they were produced yeah, what by the what, what? What network? They were. I mean, by Warner Brothers, right? So you took the same um, new edition. Here comes. Um, New kids on the block, like so. Rather than you, you know, you're, you, you're, you're you, huh? Look at Chuck Berry and the Beach Boys. Yeah, muddy water. Just, Justin Bieber is real average, y'all, in my opinion. But it's because I mean, even look, and we're guilty of it. You'll see, you'll see somebody of a different race do the electric slide, and you get excited. Wow, look, they're doing. Like, wait, what? I mean. Some of this stuff is self-inflicted. Look, I'm glad you said that. Here, let, let, read this. Listen to this. This is this is near the end of the essay. That is a that is a good point, Bruh, I almost threw the book away. She said this. She's talking about Paul, Paul Paulo Pauli Friere when he says, uh, "From the pedagogy of the oppressed," he said, "The true focus of revolutionary change is never merely the oppressive situations which we seek to escape." But that piece of the oppressor, which is planted deep within each of us. So every time we combat the oppressor, we also are taking off some of the oppressor's nonsense off of ourselves. Mm-hmm. Exactly what you were saying. Yeah. And that's, mm-hmm. how, that's how she's kind of closing it out. Like, look, I'm telling you all this, but yo, I ha- I'm, I'm ripping off some of this stuff, this stuff myself. Even as I say it, because I'm not too far gone, and we've all we've all talked about it from you know a white evangelical standpoint, a white racist evangelical standpoint. Like, yo, we all indoctrinated into it, so every day we rip some of that stuff off by taking a stand by saying, "Nah, I don't believe that anymore." You know, we we get some of the some of white supremacy off us because we we grew up in that. Every day we're ripping some of that off. So, even even how we look at even how we look at fighting racism, we look at it from black middle class. Now y'all, can, we don't have time to break that down, but think about it. When you think about, uh, well, we you know we can help the other. You know we got to help the hood people. 
no, we're all black. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, well, and, and, and and let's not forget our sexist ways. You know, because yeah. yeah. I know let's you know all of us, many of us looked at this sister with the gorilla glue in her hair, and we called her sister stupid. You know, like I, yo, I know that sister was stupid for for a myriad of reasons. But without having a level of empathy, right? You know, and yeah. saying, "Look, we know the systems and the situations that produce her, and produce a movement for her to say, I need to spray this in my hair to get it right.' Now she got the stuff; she got it out eventually, thank God. But you know, there's still some things that produce that <clears throat> for her. Yo, know, we at that six o'clock hour, so we we gonna. You know, anybody got any last words before we dip? Yo, this has been pretty thorough here. Gross. This is a deep chapter. This it's, is a lot of here. This is a lot of here. Look, right. I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to prepare y'all. This next chapter, y'all, you know, bring your guns, bring your bats, bring your knuckles, because this next chapter, the uses of anger, women responding to racism, it's, it's look, y'all better come. I'm, I, I get to jump that off. I'm coming angry next week. I'm already mad. I'm, I'm bringing the shade though. now, but I'm about to quit. I got black I'm, rage hey, all I'm the game. I'm bringing something to defend myself. I don't want to fight. I just want. <laughs> I don't want to get hit. I don't want to get hit. Look, I don't want to get hit. Tony said, said she didn't nothing, understand the gorilla glue. Yo, y'all be easy. Like if you, yeah. as we say, survive, <laughs> cultivate joy, <laughs> and resist to stay dope. Peace. Yes.